students. <laughs> You've waltzed into Menopause University and I'm your professor, Menopause Taylor. And we're conquering a unit on osteoporosis, one video at a time. This is video 204 and the osteoporosis unit began with video 196. So we've covered a lot already. Now, you know how much I implore you to watch all my videos in order. But nevertheless, I like to orient you to where we are in the series. So here's what you know so far from the previous videos. You know that osteoporosis means bone loss that begins with and is due to estrogen loss at postmenopause. The risk of osteoporosis skyrockets so much at the time of postmenopause that it is extremely common. And the parts of your body that are most vulnerable to it are your spine, hip, and wrist. And that's because the type of bone you have in those locations, which is called trabecular bone, is very porous and loosely packed. And you lose 2% of your bone each year in the first five years of postmenopause, followed by a loss of 1% per year for the rest of your life. But despite all this bone loss, there are no symptoms. You just lose bone silently. So most women discover that they have osteoporosis when they sustain a fragility fracture from minimal trauma. And the prognosis after a fracture is dismal. Most women never gain full independence. But there's a long list of risk factors for osteoporosis that enable you to determine if your risk is high. I presented the entire list to you in the last video. Here it is. So now we're ready to discuss the diagnostic tools that are available for diagnosing osteoporosis before you have a fracture. And that's what I'll address today. Now, if you're wondering why you need to know anything about the different machines for measuring your bone density, it's because they are not all the same. And knowing their differences could be the difference in whether or not you fracture a bone. Remember the very first video on osteoporosis when I told you that osteoporosis is all about bone quantity? The whole problem with osteoporosis is loss of bone. So it shouldn't surprise you to learn that all the tools for diagnosing osteoporosis focus on bone quantity. They measure how much bone you have. And there's a special term for how much bone you have. It's bone density. So bone density tests measure how dense your bones are. What they actually measure is your bone mineral. So you will sometimes see it referred to as bone mineral density or BMD. But none of the diagnostic tools tells you anything about how strong your bone is. That's why I was so emphatic about pointing out the difference between bone quantity and bo bone quality in video 196. So, let me describe some of the various options for measuring your bone density. There are many different devices for measuring your bone density, and they differ in terms of the medium used for measurement like radiation or ultrasound, the part of your body they assess, and how large the machine is itself. And because you may not have access to all machines, Maybe you have access to only one or another of these. I'll present all of them along with their differences. And I'll divide them into two groups, central testing and peripheral testing. And this pertains to the part of your body that is tested. Central devices test your spine and hip, while peripheral devices test your limbs. If you recall video 199 on bone architecture, there's a big difference in the kind of bone you have centrally versus peripherally. So the central versus peripheral distinction is very important in terms of reliability for bone density testing. 
there are essentially five different ways to measure your bone density. The central devices include central dual energy x-ray absorptiometry, <laughs> better known as central dexa, and central quantitative computed tomography, better known as central QCT. And the peripheral devices include peripheral dual energy x-ray absorptiometry, or peripheral DEXA, and peripheral quantitative computed tomography, also known as peripheral QCT, and finally quantitative ultrasound, known as QUS. So let's address each of these. Don't let those names overwhelm you. What's important is that you know which ones will give you the best information. First, we'll discuss the central devices. And we'll start with the one you need to remember the best. It's the central dual energy x-ray absorptiometry. And from now on, I'll refer to it as central DEXA. Central DEXA is the gold standard of all bone density tests. It measures the bone density in your spine and hip, giving you the sum of your cortical and trabecular bone. And it uses very low dose radiation, essentially equal to a normal daily level of background radiation. The accuracy and precision of bone density measurements using central DEXA are excellent. These machines are widely available, but they require space because they're really big. Here's what a central DEXA machine looks like. All you do is lie on the machine. Nothing attaches to you. Nothing touches you except the flat surface on which you lie. And that overhead wand passes over you. You feel nothing and the whole process takes about five to 10 minutes. Most insurance pays for central DEXA bone density testing and the cost is in the middle of the range for bone density testing. Central DEXA is the gold standard for diagnosing osteoporosis. By far, it is the very best machine for measuring bone density. Plus, it's ideal for monitoring changes in your bone density over time. If it's available, you should definitely use it. The other central device is the Central Quantitative Computed Tomography, Central QCT, and I'll refer to it as Central QCT. Central QCT measures bone density in your spine and hip, but it separates cortical bone from trabecular bone. That's the big differentiating factor between it and the Central DEXA device. Its forte is that it can measure bone density in deformed areas better than the central DEXA can. And that's because it gives three-dimensional results. It looks a lot more ominous than the central DEXA machine too. Here's a photo. But it's also a lot less accurate and precise than the central DEXA device. Plus, it involves much higher dosages of radiation and it costs a whole lot more. So it's used mostly for research. And you know, you can't use it to diagnose osteoporosis, although it can be used for that monitoring of bone density over time. Okay, now that does it for the two central devices that measure bone density in your hip and spine. Now we're gonna go to the peripheral devices. The first is the peripheral DEXA. The peripheral DEXA is the same thing as the central DEXA, except that it's a much smaller machine and it involves even less radiation than the already low radiation of the central DEXA. Here are some photos of various peripheral DEXA devices. It can measure the bone density in your arm or leg but it's less accurate than the central DEXA and it's also less expensive. 
but you can't use it to diagnose osteoporosis or to monitor changes in your bone density over time. So it's fairly limited. And then when you move on to the next device, it's the peripheral QCT. Now this is the same thing as the central QCT, except that it's much smaller. And like the peripheral DEXA, it can also measure bone density using your arm or leg. But the same limitations of the central QCT pertain to the peripheral QCT. It's not accurate. It involves higher dosages of radiation and it's more expensive. And you can't use it to diagnose osteoporosis or monitor changes in your bone density over time. Finally, we have the quantitative ultrasound. Ultrasound involves the use of sound waves, so there's no radiation. But it's only good for peripheral body parts, with the heel being the most commonly measured site. But some quantitative ultrasound devices measure bone density using your leg, your wrist, or even your finger. But the problem with ultrasound is that it's not very accurate. And it really doesn't agree at all with the measurements you get with any of the other devices I presented. Here's a photo. These quantitative devices are inexpensive and portable, but you can't use them to diagnose osteoporosis or even to monitor changes in your bone density over time. So the bottom line is that the only device that is acceptable and reliable for measuring your bone density is that central DEXA. The lower your bone density, the higher your risk of fracture. Just be aware that these other devices exist. Your doctor may use one of these other devices. If he or she does, you should say, no, thank you, and request a central DEXA scan instead. So here's a chart showing all the devices and their differences. Across the top row, you see the acronyms for the five devices I've presented to you today. The central devices are on a yellow background, while the peripheral devices are on a melon background. The text of the central DEXA is in red because it's the gold standard and the only one you should use if at all possible. The second row designates the part of your body that you test for bone density. The third row designates whether or not you can use the device to diagnose osteoporosis. As you can see, the only one that is suitable for diagnosis is the central DEXA. The fourth row designates whether or not you can use the device to monitor bone loss over time. And while the central QCT is able to do so, it's got too many other drawbacks to use it as such. The fifth line addresses accuracy. And you can see that the only device that's accurate is the central DEXA. The sixth line indicates the kind of technology used to measure your bone density. They all use x-ray except for the quantitative ultrasound device. The seventh line shows the cost differences. The eighth line gives you the pros and the ninth line gives you the cons. And I wanna add that you should use the same bone density machine every time you test your bone density. That will increase the precision markedly. Now, you know, I could have just said, use the central DEXA and left it at that for this whole video. <laughs> but you know me. I always want you to understand everything. I want you to be able to tell your doctor why you don't want to use that little bone density machine in his office and that you want a central DEXA scan instead. <laughs> and that reminds me of an incident long ago during the early years of my obstetrics and gynecology practice. I was in the market for a bone density machine, and I had contacted various vendors. Most of them had come to my office to meet with me and discuss the benefits of buying their machine. And this one young male vendor was the most ardent of all. <laughs> he really wanted me to buy his machine. <laughs> but I was taking my time making the decision. And during that time that I was shopping for one, I went to a medical product fair. Now, a medical product fair is an event where all the vendors collect in one place with all of their medical products. 
And since the product fair was an opportunity for me to see all the bone density machines at the same time, I decided to go. It was held in a great big huge hotel in the great big ballroom. And at the very entrance into the ballroom, there was a display denoting the theme for the event. Now, why they needed a theme <laughs> for a bunch of medical machinery, I don't know. But there was a theme. And the theme was something along the lines of a beach holiday. I wasn't really sure because although there were palm trees, sand, and this buff muscular male surfer displayed, the only thing that caught my eye was a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Sprawled out along a chaise was a young woman wearing a mermaid costume. And it was just so beautiful that I failed to really notice anything else. Her top was a silver sequin bustier with purple flowers adorning it. And her, the bottom was a full length skin tight, hip height, shimmery material of turquoise. And it ended in a huge purple fin that concealed her feet. She lay there flapping her fin in the air <laughs> and I just stared at her. I felt like a little girl mesmerized by a Disney character. <laughs> After a couple of minutes of just ogling her costume, I collected myself and headed off to look at the bone density machines. I made the rounds, I saw them all. And I ran into that young male vendor who wanted so badly for me to buy his machine. Please, Dr. Taylor, buy my DEXA scanner, he implored yet again. <laughs> and you know, our brains work really strangely. Well, mine does anyway. And you know how you sometimes have an instantaneous response before you can stop yourself? Well, that's sort of what happened to me then. I looked at him and I said, I'll tell you what. You get me a mermaid costume like the one on the lady at the entrance and I'll buy your machine. He looked at me as if I were completely crazy. I didn't say anything else, but I raised my eyebrows and he knew I was serious. It's a deal, he declared. And you know what? The next day he called my office and asked for all of my measurements. <laughs> And two weeks later, my beautiful mermaid costume arrived at my office and I bought his bone density machine. I still have the mermaid costume. Here it is, right here. <laughs> this is the bustier. <laughs> A little rumpled, but still quite beautiful. And here is the bottom, the shimmery turquoise. And look at this. Fin. And here's a picture of me wearing it. Costumes have always been some of my favorite things. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it for today. Next week, I'm going to teach you about the guidelines for getting a bone density test. You need to know about those guidelines. They are not what you would expect, so don't miss it. In the meantime, schedule a consultation at menopausetaylor.me if you need one. Subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I'll see you then. Bye!